Okay. Once it's yeah. Hi everyone, myself Rachna from 6M B Plan. It's my pleasure to welcome all the participants today. First, I would like to welcome our di uh, our uh, HOD ma'am, Dr. Gayatri Aditya, for this webinar. I welcome you, ma'am. Now, I would like to welcome all the faculty as a part of this webinar. Now, I would like to welcome speaker, planner, uh, Alakya ma'am, for sharing her knowledge on sustainable agriculture. I welcome you, ma'am. Last but not the least, I would like to welcome all the students who are gathered in the webinar. Welcome you all. Thank you, Rachna. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Alikya, and uh, today I'll be sharing a very little views of mine on sustainable agriculture. So for you all to know why sustainable agriculture, uh, it was a personal interest for me when I was doing my master's in rural development. Uh, why were we low, uh, left behind in adapting the sustainable agricultural part practition was the question. And to answer that question, I had to know what exactly was sustainable agriculture. So now if you feel that I will tell you what exactly sustainable agriculture, I'm very small to do that. But still, I will tell you my views on it, or maybe what I know about it, and how it is helpful for us, and what exactly it means. So I'll just share my screen. Uh, so when it comes uh, to sustainable agriculture, sustainability is something I can say it's the favorite word of our town planners or the fellow planners. We've been learning about that particular word since when we started our graduation course and we keep use, using it in every possible terms. So as you all know, sustainability is nothing but using up things for us and also saving things for future. So what was exactly the need of sustainable agriculture or what exactly meant by sustainable agriculture? Or maybe why did we have to think about something like this? So if you all remember, there was a time where every everybody in the world were going through food crisis. We, we all uh, were having a low terms in agriculture and that is when green revolution came up where we started using technology where we started using i cannot say technology but maybe more of chemicals and pesticides to increase the yield so that point of time it always looked for everybody the main intention or the goal was to come out of this scarcity that we were in but nobody thought of what we uh, happens when we are over exploiting the available resources to us so we started using these chemicals and fertilizers and everything possible to increase our yield. We started exploiting the natural resources that we had. We started uh, adding things which were not necessary to them and we started spoiling them. So when it started that people started thinking about not using them, it is all when we had adverse effects on our health, when it showed effects on the natural resources, when it showed effects on our lifestyle, and it started giving us some lifestyle oriented diseases and things like that. Then came the question mark, why are we using these chemicals? So when it comes to the term of sustainable agriculture, the basically the term started gaining prominence in the US in 1980s. So in 1990, the US Congress formally addressed and defined the sub sustainable agriculture under their system of law. Over the years, the civil society, the private sector, the multilateral institutions and various national sub and subnational governments have used this term in sustainable agriculture to get this into the lifestyle and make it a change. So in India, the national government initiated a national mission for sustainable agriculture, the NMSA, in 2014 to 15 to spread awareness among the people what to stop and what to do and what exactly the sustainable agriculture was and how do we adapt it. So which formally defines the sustainable agriculture in Indian context and also has identified 10 underlying dimensions that they consider that have to be practiced under sustainable agriculture. So we have to exactly define what exactly is this. It is an integrated system of plant and animal production practices having a site specific application that will on the long term satisfy the human food and fiber needs, enhance the environmental quality and the natural resources base upon which the agriculture economy depends, makes the most efficient use of non-renewable resources and 
on farm resources and integrate where appropriate natural biogas cycles and controls are available. It sustains the economic viability of a farm operations and also enhances the quality of life for farmers and society as a whole. So when we talk about sustainable agriculture, everybody they remember what is organic farming. So if you all think what exactly is organic farming, organic farming, all people started thinking about only of not using chemicals and they all think that is what is sustainable agriculture. There is a little confusion between is organic farming same that as sustainable agriculture. But probably we can say organic farming is just one of the method that can be adapted under sustainable agriculture, but we can never say they both are same. Organic farming is a practice that allows us not to use any chemicals, but sustainable agriculture does not mandate us of not not using chemicals, but it says it has to happen in a safe level where we are not over exploiting things. And what exactly is sustainable agriculture? So all the three things or the three pillars that fall into the sustainability of agriculture is environmental sustainability, financial sustainability and social sustainability. So it is basically the set of practices that are economically viable for the farmers, which do not get them into the depth in the risk, which are environmentally safe, that is do not have any negative effects on our natural resources. And they are socially acceptable, that is they get the terms of equality and inclusiveness when they are practicing it. So these are the three main pillars of sustainable agriculture. So when we talk about what comes under ecological or environmental balance under sustainable agriculture, it is about the soil fertility, the water consumption, the biodiversity, pollution, landscape and climate. So we all might think without using the pesticides or fertilizers, how are we going to maintain the soil fertility? Because we all know, we all would have read about our ancient civilizations where agriculture was the basic economy and it started off with agriculture and we started off with barter and we started off with agrarian economy. Then and there we didn't have any of the chemical induced into our soil to increase the fertility. All the sustainable agricultural practices concentrate on attaining the ecological balance in a natural way. They, it, the practices encourage uh, uh, crop rotation, it encourage natural uh, pesticides and all such things to maintain the soil fertility. It improves fertility and soil structure and it also tells you about ways to prevent soil erosion. And then it comes to water consumption, we all know most of our water resources go into irrigation for agriculture in the in the in the form of canals that we have, in the form of other water supplies that we have. But all sustainable agriculture tells you is do not rely on these sources, but also try and utilize the available fresh water and natural resources to the minimal that you can do it. Come up with innovative practices of drip irrigation, say uh, drop by drop irrigation or any other practice that would save your water. Also, it saves some water for your future by rainwater harvesting and other things like that. And when it comes to biodiversity, it is about a practice where you are trying to have various crops, a diversification in the cropping that you're doing, the pattern that is allowing a mixed cropping things to increase the diversity that is happening in small part of your land. So when you are diversifying the crop and when you are having different cropping patterns that you are adapting, you give animals and plants a pattern for them, wherein your insecticides also are not required sometimes. And when it talks of pollution, it is all about not using the chemicals and fertilizers, that is reduction in the pollution that you are doing to the environment. And when it comes to the landscape, we all know agriculture and forestry is the first basic landscape that we all had in our rural country. So sustainable agriculture says 
not everything has to give you monetary benefits. It's all about how safe you are taking care of your land. So it is all about how are you covering your land? How beautiful is your landscape with the agroforestry practices, with the forestry that you are doing, with the agriculture that you are doing, and with the diverse crops that you're putting it. And then comes to the climate. You all know the microclimatic conditions are all about the cropping that you do. But still, do you think it's only microclimatic? We all thought about the carbon footprint that we are leaving. We all thought about the uh, pollution that is happening in our urban areas. But still, our rural areas also contribute to our pollution in the form of greenhouse gases, in the form of fertilizers that we use. So when we go back to our conventional agricultural contributions, the protection, I mean, the protection of ozone layer had become very difficult when they started using heavy pesticides. So when you talk about climatic conditions, sustainable agriculture asks you to save your climate from these pollutants. And when it comes to the next one, that is the economical viability and how the farmers have to be economically happy by adapting the sustainable practices. All we know or all is in uh, is in publicity that you know like when sustainable agricultural practices are taken into consideration it gives you a lesser yield lesser yield meaning lesser money for the farmer but that is very short term what everybody has to understand is economical sustainability is not how much you are getting now it is a track it, it is a journey where you are making it safe for you. You are looking for sustainable alternatives and you are doing a long term economical planning for yourself. So this sustainable agricultural practices should be a long term economical plan for all our farmers where we are going to strengthen our local markets. That is, we are trying to tell people to rely on our local markets for the produce that you're getting. Reduction in exports and increasing the reliability and reliability on our local markets would give a good economical viability to our farmers. And as we see, there is a lot of depth and risk that is involved in our conventional farming methods where people invest a lot in buying the insecticides and pesticides and there are so many cases in India where these insecticides they are successful sometimes in killing the insects in the farm but they're most successful sometimes in killing the farmers that is all because of not every pesticides work good on your crop some pesticides eat the pest on your crop, but some pesticides entirely eat the crop. So the depth and risk are all interrelated with the practice that we are taking care of. So when you talk about the sustainable agricultural practices, the natural pest, you know, like there are people who fight and say, no, the natural pest is only half. That is, it does only its 50% job and the other 50% goes waste. But still, on a long term practice, when you accommodate it, it will reduce that risk of debt because you are investing less. All you have to think is when your investment is less and your return is less, that's OK. But what if your investment high and return is less, you are at a loss. So this economical viability can be attained by adapting to sustainable farming. And then you have what is employment. We all know that, you know, our uh, markets uh, our farming is the main source of employment in our country we are still agrarian based economy where most of our people are still in your agricultures but but what exactly is happening here is we also read about the marginal farmers and the seasonal farmers who have no work half the year so when there is no work in the other half of the year we see them going into some other jobs we see government getting them into other uh, intensified uh, jobs where they could not contribute to things like that. But when you talk about sustainable ag agriculture, it is a practice that is telling you how to practice the seasonal farming as well. Which seasonal crop can you do all round in a year? Which is the crop that you can change in every six months? Which is the crop that gives you money when there is a market or what is the season for it and all such things. So when you talk about this small intensified agricultural practice that you adapt, which runs on all 365 days, it makes sure that you are employed all the round, which 
intense i mean which helps us in decreasing the employment unemployment sorry and then when you come to the social sustainability it is all uh, related to the ideas and the acceptance and the justice that you have in our uh, society so it all talks about uh, inclusiveness why are we specially talking about inclusiveness in agriculture because we see that most of the peasants that we have have in agriculture as the landless laborers that we have in agriculture do not have a chance to go and do something for themselves so inclusiveness talks about the some sustainable agricultural practices that encourage these people to do farming in what they have they don't have to take depth they don't have to use technology they don't don't have to run or rush to somebody to get help they train them themselves that in such a way that they can do what they want with what they have it is all about you doing something with the resources that are available to you local innovation and acceptance is something that we we are encouraging these nowadays because you know like when we get so many technologies from outside they are not native sometimes it is acceptance that is coming in between that people don't accept the technology that we have but sometimes it is something that the model is failing because it is not able to be adapted to the uh, existing environment that we have so that doesn't mean we don't innovate ourselves but it means that we have to encourage our local innovations instead of importing technology you know like we have to try and support the local innovation that we have and how the local customs or traditions can also be turned in such a way that it can help you in achieving something but not stopping you from doing something then we have the indigenous practices so if we talk about sustainable uh, agriculture it's all about uh, our practices which happened in our ancient time where uh, people really didn't know what was a chemical fertilizer and they had their manures uh, or they had the waste from the house waste from their animals these all coming as fertilizers for the soil so it is nothing but the indigenous practices that been happening and when it comes to food security there is enough debate that has been happening all around since the sustainable agriculture term came into the market seeing because the yield is low and if we have everybody adapting to sustainable agriculture we might land up into food crisis because the yield would be low the consumption will be high but what they say is if you try and adapt to the traditional farming techniques as much as possible and try to focus on increasing this few commodities the market will be surplus with such commodities which can always be exchanged for something that we need so what they're trying to tell you is do not do according to your wants do it according to what you're getting and exchange that for your needs so that that is how you can secure your food security or increase your food security when there is enough of economic exchange happening between and then it comes to participation as i again told you when it comes to the sustainable agricultural practices it is all about using what you have and doing what you have using with the local resources so it does not go with the caste creed or you know it does not go if he is a peasant he has to do only the labor work it's nothing like that if he owns the land if he has certain chunk of a land and all others around him are ready to pool the land it's a new technique that has been adapted that is common farming or you can always call it joint farming so that calls about the inclusiveness and the participation both put together where everybody who owns small or big they share their land they do joint farming and they divide the produce after that so these are the three main important things that are delivered from sustainable agriculture so if you exactly have to know what is the difference between the organic farming and sustainable agriculture organic farming excludes the use of synthetic inputs but sustainability aims balance between what is taken out of the soil and what are you returning to it we are not talking only about the output that we are getting from the soil we are also talking about the input that we are giving it to it and organic farming constitute of only a small percent of farms with a minor impact on environment but sustainable agriculture aims to make a positive change on all farms that are there so 
sustainable agriculture always need not be only in the pro, uh, in the mode of organic farming there are many other modes that can be adapted to achieve this sustainable agriculture so if we have to know what are the 16 most promising practices that we have in sustainable agriculture as we all know the first one is organic farming because it's basically where we are producing everything without using any synthetic produce or you know without using any chemicals or fertilizers or pesticides so that attracts the market that attracts the buyers so that is why organic farming has become the main component or the most practiced form of sustainable agriculture that people started mistaking it's all the same they all thought okay organic farming is nothing but a sustainable agriculture but it's not that that organic farming is all same as it but it's just a part of it and there are 16 other more uh, practices that are always adaptable under sustainable agriculture out of which the first one is organic farming the next one is orgo forest argo forestry we all know it's one of the traditional modern land use system where we plant trees shrubs you know bamboos everything that can grow in the land without thinking about what is the output of it and the next one what we have is natural farming and this is all about including natural elements that are there which are locally available to you the low cost natural elements that are locally available to you into your farming without procuring something from outside and then we have the system of rice intensification this is basically a climate smart uh, agrological methodology the main intense uh, the main intention of system of rice int intensification is increasing the produce of rice because we all know our staple food is rice and it's only a process or a methodology that is adapted so that we don't run into food crisis and by end of the day or end of the year or end of your lifetime anytime when you go back and see there is surplus grains that are available to you to satisfy the hunger and then we have precision farming it's basically uh, to to tell what exactly is precision farming, we can tell it is a fancy model of farming where we are integrating information technology into agriculture. We are trying to analyze the soil, the farm, the plant, everything using artificial intelligence or technology or our cam scanners to the precision that we are doing what is required. It is like we are not giving everything a holistic approach, but we are trying to intensify the approach and customize the approach based on the requirement. We are giving what it needs. We are not giving what we think. That is precision farming. And it, when it comes to conservation agriculture, it is all about you know like uh, defining your farm as an ecosystem, trying to see that it itself is an own entity and you are not disturbing that ecosystem in any means you're conserving that ecosystem for you in the form of an agriculture you are trying to safeguard your farm and you're you're considering it to be one separate ecosystem that belongs to you crop rotation and intercropping is something that we have been uh, learning since uh, i can say since our elementary uh, education in environmental sciences that was something that was adapted by our ancestors or in history then when we had it was i can say it was an intelligent cropping system where depending upon the climate and the soil requirement we had one crop and maybe once the soil was weak enough we had another crop which was helping it to fix it which was giving it time to take that rest so this crop rotation was some of the best practices that we had where soil was not pressurized we were not overly pressurizing it to give increased output and when it comes to intercropping uh, intercropping basically started you know like uh, with one or two crops having mixed crops but later it started with uh, vertical cropping and horizontal cropping where there were multiple crops grown at a level they it it when people started understanding the uh, nature of the plants and how much they grow they started analyzing how could they space save it like having trees and shrubs at one level having smaller vegetables in one bottom level having creepers in between level so they started intercropping so that with the same chunk of land they could get more uh, yield out of it 
and then we had cover crops in mulching it is nothing but we all read how do we stop our soil erosion by just covering randomly the soil with any plants that we get so it is nothing but to safeguard our soil we are having cover our crops and mulching which are holding the soil for us and which are not allowing us to lose that soil which is available to us and then we have the integrated pest management system so when we talk about integrated pest management system it is about uh, you know like using suitable techniques to control your pest it need not be only the chemical te te techniques it can be the natural techniques or it can be chemical techniques that are environmentally acceptable so that is the reason i always uh, told from starting that sustainable agriculture does not mandate you that you can't use chemicals it only says you use environmentally acceptable chemicals that do not spoil or do not disturb your ecosystem in, under your farm and what is vermi composting is another thing that uh, is again under sustainable agriculture uh, agriculture so we all know what is uh, vermi composting it's uh, the process where we are using our own earthworms uh, to, you know like uh, to convert the waste into haste we are basically doing a waste conversion into haste so that we are using this waste to do our agriculture using the earthworms and then we have uh, biodynamic uh, sorry biodynamic uh, farming so it's you know uh, about how the living entities in your farm are correlated to each other like in if you all remember every farmer had his own uh, livestock has its own poultry had ducks and all similar things in his farm why did this happen because his cows or his ducks or the livestock that he had had were grazing on his own field the the excreta of these animals is being used as a manure in his old field so it's a cycle that's been running like in the crops are dependent on it and then they have a rotation which's been happening so that helps him to have a biodynamic farming there and also sometimes biodynamic farming is all about the seasons that you adapt to that is based on a season you choose the crop that you have to do based if it is a rainy season you understand okay i am going to have excess of water so i am going to crop something that needs more water so it it it's calendar uh, sensitive we can talk about and then we have uh, the contour farming so when we talk about uh, contour farming we all would have seen uh, terrace farming or listen to the terrace farming which kept happening in our um, hilly areas but all the doubt that we would have have is what is the difference between contour farming and terrace farming terrace farming basically at one one level of each uh, place they started flattening the land and they edited the land and they made it into terraces according to their comfortable thing but contour farming is you are not disturbing your character of your land you are following the contour lines and you are just doing the farming there and then you have the integrated farming system as i told you integrated farming system the name itself will tell you that it's integration of horticulture aquaculture the livestock that you have it's it's just the correlation between the different entities that you are maintaining in your own farm and then you have rainwater harvesting and artificial recharge of groundwater so this is something that's uh, very very vastly happening in our country where awareness is spread among to people that when you have abundance of water try and save it for your future try and store it for your future do not leave your rainwater into the rivers do not leave, leave them into the super flowing into rivers but try and catch them somewhere to use into your future and then we have floating farming floating farming is something uh it has been happening it is not nothing new it does nothing new it's been happening since long time in places like kerala places like assam where water logging is a common phenomena for them where water is always there so if you if if you go back and see the history of kashmir history of uh, uh himachal pradesh assam where water logging is common there floating farming is common but few places there was no prominence that's the reason it was included under something that needs to be spread among people or to be told to people and last but not the least we have something called as permaculture so it's uh, basically 
perma as permanent and culture so to emphasize you know like uh, you are adapting something or you are designing something that is permanent you are you are trying to manage it which is trying to edit it uh the ecological balance of your land and leaving a permanent footprint on it you are not being nomadic in nature you are doing an agriculture or you are planning an agricultural system that stays for lifetime to support you so these are uh, the 16 practices of sustainable agriculture so when we talk about india on sustainable farming so less than 4% of indian farmers have adapted sustainable agricultural practices and systems which is based on a study that was done by council of energy environment and water so natural farming is the fastest growing sustainable agricultural practice in india and it was adapted by almost 8 lakh farmers integrated pest management also has achieved a coverage of 5 million hectares after decades of sustained promotion agroforestry and rainwater harvesting have received significant attention in national programs and over 25 million of hectares and 27 million of hectares respectively were adapted under agroforestry and rainwater harvesting so when all all these practices were tried and explained to people in india only few of them were ready to go for a slow race instead of adapting a higher race like in if the conventional practices that we are using now promise you a higher yield but sustainable farming is a slow and steady race that promises you a safe future but not a high present so most of the people were not ready to adapt it but still with the awareness that there was given to them the missions that we had and the government policies and subsidies that were given to them they could successfully do these things that we are seeing here that is they could successfully get the implication of integrated pest management agroforestry and rainwater harvesting in india till an extent but still there's a lot of things to be achieved for us so when we talk about how is government or indian government supporting sustainable agriculture we have something called as a national mission for sustainable agriculture which basically uh, supports people who are adapting to this lifestyle so it tells them about how to use the water efficiently how do you manage your nutrients and what is livelihood diversification it tells them how to adapt sustainable development pathway what are that te technologies which help them to attain uh, the sustainable practices what is that equipment which supports them and how do they go towards sustainability in their farming and mm nmsa aims at promoting location specific improved agronomic practices through soil health management enhanced water use and efficiency judicious use of chemicals crop diversification progressive adaptation of crop livestock livestock farming system and integrated approaches like crop and sericulture agroforestry fish farming etc so they try and get to the farmers to explain them how to adapt a sustainable agricultural through all this uh, practices and what do they get out of it so if you ask is sustainable agriculture the final destination of our farming we cannot say sustainable agriculture is the final destination we should always say it is the journey that we have to take which is continuous because we all know sustainability has no end it is the meaning exactly means that is something which has to sustain so your destination always is last and it has a full stop there but sustainability is something that cannot stop somewhere it must be the journey that we are adapting and our destination cannot be reached because we have to continue living sustainably because our future is always infinite thank you guys thank you thank you alaika ma'am for sharing knowledge on uh, uh, sustainable agriculture food security in integrous method of fertilizers and uh, about the solution for seasonal farming to the get, to get an year around income uh, if any students have any doubt you can ask 
so i have a doubt uh, so alikya you mentioned uh, in the beginning uh, one of the first few slides where you said uh, diversification is about diversification right yes ma'am uh why why shouldn't it be there why should it be there sorry uh uh i mean crop diversification ma'am yes you said okay. crop diversification uh, so should be because, there what is the primary reason for it uh ma'am uh, you know like um when we have variety of crops to choose from uh the production related you know like uh, the reliability on one crop is reduced you have certain you you have many options to choose so your dependability on one particular product is getting reduced there so it it gives users also options to choose and it gives the farmers also options to choose to grow so we we are trying to increase the spread in our market than you know uh, depending upon one single commodity that we have been doing since long time no say the last part again ma'am it it's basically a practice where the risk is reduced say there is no diversification and we've been farming only one particular commodity since long time we have not tried and you know tested any other options that we have which could be grown for the same area in the same climate that is available we have not tried and tested only so the dependability is such that if that market you know like uh, if that product has no market that is the product has lost its demand then the farmer is always in a loss but if he has this diversification that is if he has two three options that he has tried and tested on his land he has the two three options to sell he is not left out with that one particular option which is not getting sold out it is decreasing that risk on him right okay uh, i thought maybe in terms of like climate change or something if you want uh, is is your point uh, ma'am uh, i mean it can be economical i mean the first uh, intention that we tell about crop diversification to the farmer is in the terms of economy because they're more related about the returns that they are getting so mm. if we tell them that you will contribute to the climate they would not show an interest but if we tell them that having a diverse diversification and different types of crops you will get more money that would attract the farmers so we are just trying to uh, take that point of their economical weakness to contribute to the other things as well so when we are when we are explaining them or spreading awareness to them in in parts of diversification we always tell in terms of economic uh, advantages that they have do right. we have different advantages behind hmm yeah Yeah. yeah and that's anybody else any questions okay if no questions yeah we can end it up thank you thank you uh, gayatri ma'am for uh, being a part of this webinar i would like to thank all the students and faculty who were uh, making this um, webinar successful thank you one and all have a nice day stay safe thank you guys thank you ma'am thank you ma'am
uh, when maybe in the last class. Ma'am, last class will not give me a presentation. Next week, next class, I will give all the presentations. Is that okay? Yeah, it's all right. Next week, I should be there not to take your presentation. What you guys are online? What? No, not to you. Yes, ma'am. Aishwarya Niharika. Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes, ma'am.